If personal vision is one of the greatest pillars of personal success, what do we do when we find ourselves serving someone else's vision? Is it wrong to serve someone else's vision in the first place? And uh, that's just a glorified way of saying, is it wrong to be employed and at the same time you have your own personal vision? What do you do? when you have to balance between putting food on the table by getting employed and serving your vision. What happens? That's what I want us to discuss today. But I've been saying all along that it's easier to get a vision than it is to make this vision come fruitful. So we are putting together some nuggets here and there that can help us to make sure that the vision comes to fruition. And today we're going to delve into this murky world of How do I balance my employment and my vision? What do I do? I have a full-time job and I have this grand vision. I don't have time to do my vision and my full-time job puts food on the table. If I don't have this full-time job, how am I going to do my vision? Stay tuned. Welcome to the Life Signatures Podcast with Lawrence Namale. Lawrence is a life coach, author, and keynote speaker who loves to tackle different topics on purpose, productivity, and resilience. His mission in life is to awaken all your boundless possibilities available in you. Life Signatures Podcast is dedicated to bring to reality every single person who knows that deep down in their gut, there's got to be more to life than this. And now, here is your host, Lawrence Namale. Perhaps this is going to be the greatest question that this generation will need to answer. What do they do in order to pursue their vision? A mastermind I was in posed that question to me and they say that, Lawrence, you're always talking about purpose and starting with why. What do you tell a university graduate who has seen a need in the market? Should they go for that need Or should they pursue their purpose or their vision? Or should they pursue their why? What do do you do? And I've always said this, that first of all, you've got to realize that not everyone in that university, whatever, has seen the same need as this person who has seen it, which tells you that there's something inside of them that has pulled them and has connected them to that need, to that problem solving. Therefore, it's kind of connected to what they can do. Maybe they're passionate about it or something like that. And just so they can create an empire out of it if they stick with it and they do some of the things that I've been talking about. And so the question is, I have got to put food on the table. I've got to, you know, buy things and, and pay my bills and so on. But I also have to pursue my vision. How do I do it? How do I do? What do I do? What do I do when there is an opportunity for me to make money? It is right here. The opportunity is here for me to make money. This vision thing of mine is not working at the moment. And someone is offering me a J-O-B to be paying me money assuredly at the end of every month. What do I do? That's one way of looking at it. Few months back, maybe a few weeks back, I got an invitation from a major organization in the world through LinkedIn. They have seen my work. They have seen the things that I stand for. They have seen my coaching and so on. And so they thought that I could be a resource person to them. And they extended this opportunity to me. And they said, Lawrence... 
we want you to become the regional manager of your country. And the regional manager is going to have access to propri- proprietary coaching curriculum and framework that he's going to be responsible for disseminating to small and medium sized enterprises in the entire country. And he's supposed to start paying maybe, I think, 5,000 pounds or something of that nature to get into the program and he can start earning and so on. And the, the more they shared about it, the more it looked like network marketing to me and so on. Long story short, I was sold the first few minutes. You see, when someone shows you the money, at times when someone shows you the money, you get sold. That's how pyramid schemes, pyramid schemes and jobs, that's how they thrive. That's how they hoodwink people. Especially if you do not have a vision. You get sold on the money. They normally say that the brain is a very unique gadget that we have. It works 24 hours, 7 days a week, 365 days a year. Until you fall in love or... You get an opportunity to make money. It stops working. That's where the vision comes in. The vision shields you. The vision protects you. Because I was sold to this vision of these guys. Remember, these guys have their own vision. To reach out to SMEs and so on. And I, I, I sat down and I looked at the vision that Lawrence has for his life. For life signatures. And I figured that if I become the regional manager that these guys want me to become, where would my time go? Where will my effort go? How will I channel my efforts? How will I channel my resources? What if I take these 5,000 pounds that they want me to pay them to join them and inject them into my vision right there and then an answer was found? And I never joined them. I said no. But you see, that's being on a high level. There's this reality on the ground where you and I, we've got to make money. Let me just do a small recap for you before I can proceed. We've been saying that if you wanted the vision to work, that is the hard part. But there's some things that you, you need to do. First of all, you need to make sure that you're creating a daily routine for the vision. Without the daily routine, the vision is not going to come to fruition. Number two, we say that you need to create non-negotiables, things that you must never be found dead doing, and things that you must do when it's raining, when it's shining, no matter what, when it's snowing, you've got to do them. The non-negotiables, you've got to have them. They're going to support your vision. And then number three, we say you need to create a mastermind. Find men and women of like passion so that you can do work together centered around that vision people who are bought into the vision and then number four we said you create some endurance and some brooding space for that vision today number five if you wanted that vision to work you've got to be flexible with taking detours this sounds like counterintuitive this sounds like it's against the message of sticking with the vision on a daily basis. This sounds like dumping the vision and taking a shiny object and taking a job instead of doing the vision. But you've got to be wise as far as this is concerned. Chances are that some of these detours actually are a blessing in disguise. They are not necessarily just going to give you money to fund part of the vision. They are also going to give you men and women of like passions and connections and even openings to organizations and so on, which your eventual vision is going to serve and it has happened to me. Life Signatures, as I speak today, has a contract with a major organization in the country. And the reason as to why that is so is because I took the detour to offer consultancy under someone else's brand and be quote-unquote employed instead of partnering with them for a few years. And as I was in there, I saw the ins and outs of this organization who is now my client. Being in my client's office, the CEO's office, talking strategy, and they saw my spirit, they saw my passion, talking strategy, helping them solve problems here and there. I was flexible enough. You see, I would have stuck with my vision of life signature and say, hey, I cannot do nothing else until this life signature stands. There is that, and I respect that. There is... 
There is a time and a place where you cannot go back. You burn the bridges and you just do the vision and the vision alone. But there is also a place where you've got to be flexible enough to take the opportunities that life is giving you. Albeit things about serving other people's visions. And you never know what's going to be the outcome of it. But I'm asking you to be flexible enough, wise enough to gauge just as long as you're sure you're not running into a pyramid scheme, you're not running into a get-rich-quick scheme, you're not running into a shiny object, but you're running to something that has come to you, has been offered to you. People have seen that you have this kind of value you're bringing to the table and they can compensate you for this. And you can make the calculations and you can say, I can go there and I can increase my capacity. Mental capacity can be increased. I can increase my social capacity. I can increase my social capital. I can increase my financial capital. I can increase my networks as I'm taking this detour. But I'm not necessarily benching my vision. That's exactly what I did. I did not bench my vision. I kept filing returns for my company. You know, I kept writing about my company. I kept speaking about my company. I kept having my own email for my company, even as I was employed by somebody else. And every time I will get money in terms of salary, or whatever it is, bonus, I channel it into the vision. So I'm increasing in different ways here. Of course, my vision is not being given full-time commitment because maybe at that moment in time I do not have the capacity to do that, but I'm getting reprieve working for somebody else as I am funding my vision and I'm also getting connections to men and women and even organizations that I can work with with life signatures later on or even immediately or in the medium term or in the long term. My point is simply this. For your vision to come to fruition, you've got to be flexible enough to take some detours, you know, to consider benching, quote-unquote, painfully the vision so that you can do something else for a season of time, gain experience, gain growth, gain recognition, gain capacity, working with someone else, working on somebody else's vision, someone else's project, and give your absolute best. And all the while, you're having the vision that you have been given, or your own vision at the back of your mind. You might not be, you know, get this vocation that most directly into your vision, especially if you are in high school or university, you've just gotten out, and you have a vision. And the immediate thing that comes to you is not necessarily something that is going to work directly into your vision. But you have a readily available opportunity. It cuts both ways, by the way. There are those opportunities that will basically kill your vision. As in, you don't have time whatsoever to think even about your vision. You work like a donkey from, you know, 6 a.m. to 8 p.m. and Monday to Sunday. There's nothing else you're doing and they're just giving you peanuts and you're paying you just enough to go back. There's that. But then there's another one that has some kind of flexibility. What I'm saying is that do you go ahead and take a job that is going to kill your vision and you have absolutely no idea whether it's going to kill your vision or it's going to grow it? You don't know. But what do you do? When you come to that place between a rock and a hard place, when you come to the crossroads, what do you do? See, my mentor, Miles Munro, gave something very unique. And uh, I believe that this is one of the most beautiful, fruitful pieces of advice that you can give to someone who is in this conundrum. He says that the best and most fruitful time for a visionary who is employed is 5 o'clock. Why? Because you've been scripted to work from 9 to 5 or from 8 to to five immediately it clocks 5 p.m it's your time it's the time to serve your vision this is the time that you need to work on yourself and work on your vision it's gonna cost you it's gonna cost you energy it's gonna cost you money 
It's going to cost you late nights and so on. But for me, as I was working, let me tell you, as I was working for this organization, I found the sweet spot and it was the sweetest spot ever. I kid you not. The sweet spot for me was between 4 a.m. and 8 a.m. In other words, yes, take the job, but don't dump the vision. Between 4 a.m. and 8 a.m., by the time people are waking up and getting to work, I would have checked off my calendar that I have done seven things that are directly connected to my vision. And yet people are still sleeping. And then I go to the job. By the way, the job finds me awake. People get to work at 8. I go to work at 6. There is no jam, traffic jam at 6 a.m. None whatsoever. I'm already at work seated, reading, swatting, writing, masterminding, doing this and this and that on my own vision before 8 a.m. reaches. When 8 a.m. comes, I bench my vision and I start doing something else. That used to work for me. And then after 5 a.m., after 5 p.m., whatever you do is on you. It is your vision. That is how you can be able to balance. So I'm saying this just to summarize that there's going to be a path between your day job and your dream job. And I'm not going to be one of those motivational speakers who will tell you that don't take a job and so on and so forth. Listen, everything has a place. There is nothing useless on the face of the earth. I don't know where I will be without jobs in my life. I wasn't born working on life signatures. But the sum total of whom I am and whom I am becoming can never be extricated from the jobs that I took and the places that I worked and the people that I worked for. They are connected to life signatures, whether they want it or not. They are contributory to life signatures. So what I'm saying in short is that be flexible with your detours. When a shiny object comes, analyze it well and take a step. Take a stand. Find a way that you can be able to balance between doing your vision and doing the other job or the other assignment or the other project and so on. And especially if you can gain much more than just salary from the gig you're taking. But by all means, the key word here is this. Never bench your vision. Never forget your vision even when you're taking a detour. Find a block of time on a daily basis that you can be able to serve your vision as you're serving someone else's vision. Is that serving two masters at the same time? No. Your master wants you at eight or at nine to five. What you do outside of those hours is up to you. So you're not serving two masters. Are we together? Yeah, we are together. Until next time, bye-bye. A special shout out to my mentor, Jeffrey Howard of Visionary Business University, found at mastermindmentor.com, who has graciously provided me with the soundtrack and the introductory track to this podcast. Thank you, Jeff. Thank you for listening to Life Signatures Radio. If you enjoyed today's show, subscribe to Life Signatures Radio on iTunes, Stitcher, or visit our website at lifesignatures.libsyn.com. Life Signatures Radio, fresh, clean, and inspiring.